Warning, the following podcast contains coarse language and spoilers for the film and the title of the podcast. Now playing movie reviews in 20 cues. Yes, hello, good people. I am back. Yes, I am. It's your favorite, your favorite, your favorite podcast of there to Sam. Look at the look of disgust. Don't you mean Liz? <laughs> no, fuck no. Everybody loves me. I'm the king, and I'm back, and I'm back. I'm back from. I'm, Back from a breakaway is the best way I'm going to describe it without getting too much into my personal life. I've had some time off and I am back and I am very happy to be back. And uh, I am joined by Liz, who's already introduced herself. How are you, Liz? What's happening? <laughs> I'm great. And look, I'll, I'll be nice to you for one moment in this podcast. It's nice to have you back at the podcast. That's you are going to last maximum eight questions before you were mean to me because, by God, have I got something to say about you on one of these questions. <laughs> Oh, I know which one. And I told Scott when we were prepping, well, because I was answering the question. So I was like, I have to pick a really horrible answer here because I know Sam is going to say a really horrible answer for me. Fuck yeah. So don't you think, of, if you think I'm not prepared, well, you are wrong, mister. And no, I good. said I was going to give you one nice thing. That's it. From oh, here good. on okay. out, it's Sweet. We're done. Fucking, yeah, brutal. We're, we're all out. And talking about all out, is I have got you on this podcast because I've had you on other people's favorite films or, 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 you know, some of their most highly regarded top 10, top 20 films. I've had you on other episodes of those persons. The Mummy. You're you're the Mummy. (laughs) Uh, Social Network. What's some other ones you've shat all over? There's been a few. Um, and Something Nick loved. Yeah, that was Social Network. And you've just taken Mm. massive steaming dumps over those films. And you knew this was one of my favorite films. And you actually pushed and said, hey, should we go see the new indie film? And, you know, I don't want to see it. I'm going to be honest. I'm not, I'm not, I've got very limited social time and I don't really want to go out and see it. But when I said Raiders of the Lost Ark in honor of, you know, the new indie film, you were like fucking all for it. Cause I suspect you want to be here to shit all over one of my favorite films. Okay. You are just projecting. You don't know. You don't know. Um, I will say so that curious. this was great. This was a great choice for us to do because it's a movie that my boyfriend will watch, which is, there's a very limited selection of movies he'll watch because he's seen them all and he remembers them all and it's really annoying. So I was like, Indiana Jones, he's like, oh, I love that movie. Let's watch that movie. And I was like, done. Lock that shit in. Although he has a cheeky shit about it and I'll talk about that later. But anyway. Liz is dating um, me, yeah. everyone, by the way. She, the she's known me for quite some time and she decided <laughs> that I'm quite an awesome guy. So she's gone out and found another me and now she's dating him by the sounds of it. <laughs> um, there may be some similarities, which is horrifying in its own way. Anyway, um, is he bald? No, is, he, look, is I, he full of bourbon and KFC? Because I am. <laughs> I literally think he is probably both bald and full of bourbon right now. Probably not KFC, but I'm guessing there's some bourbon in his system as we speak. So there Excellent. we are. No, look, I thought this would be great because we've got like a full-on indie fanboy nerd loser in you. <laughs> Ah, told you I was going brutal. Worse than that. And then we've got a total indie virgin over here. I have never watched Indiana Jones, any of them. Which is going to come as a shock to anybody that's listened to our podcast for more than three episodes that you haven't seen one of these films. I know, right? I haven't seen this film. Like, oh my God. And then after that, my boyfriend was like, oh, we were looking through other movies and he was like, oh, and train spotting. I'm like, I haven't seen train spotting. Fuck. Like, what? I'm not surprised that you haven't seen. I mean, well, like, who really wants to watch a bunch of like heroin junkies depressing? ruining their lives? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it sounds really depressing. Uh, uh, the world is depressing enough. It's, it's not okay? depressing, Liz. It's fucking worse than that. Okay, so it's grim. <laughs> it is grim. It's a horrible, anyway. horrible film. Yeah. Anywho, um, onto onto this film. Eight point four out of ten on IMDb. Ninety three percent Rotten Tomatoes. Ninety three percent on Flix. Hey, that's a New Zealand film website. That's random. Wow. Fancy. Anywho, fifty uh, seventh on the IMDb top two hundred and fifty movies of all time list. 57th. Okay. Easily in my top 10, if not top 5 films of all time. I mean, I'm showing my cards way too early. I don't give a shit. Uh, normally we get someone to do the plot. I don't give a shit about that. It, it, people fucking know this movie, right? It's Raiders Lost Ark. If you haven't seen Raiders Lost Ark, you're either a complete dum-dum or Liz, or both, which is Liz. So. Uh, I think you'll find I have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, yes, you have I now. I watched it last night. You have now. In the year of our Lord, it last night. 2023. <laughs> 43 yes. years after this came out. The plot's really easy anyway, right? Like an archaeologist races the Nazis to find the Ark of the 
covenant or whatever? Holy shit, I'm impressed. That's actually quite quite well done for you. I'm guessing you prepped it earlier and you were like, no, fuck no, off, I Sam. No, I didn't. I'm going to force my just... way in here. I'm going to knock down your door. I'm going to give you a plot. I don't give a shit if you're trying to skip over it. I'm going to force it's my plot down your door. It's just quite simplistic. Your... It's just quite a simplistic plot, Sam. It, it actually is. It actually is. Yeah. Anywho, uh, if you haven't heard this podcast before, can, welcome. Hey, how are you doing? Sure. Um, it's, uh, it's not. I would say it's not always this terrible, no, but it actually worse. is. Like, top quality podcasting. God damn it, you beat me to it. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard this podcast before, what we do is we take a movie, we ask 20 questions about it. We usually start with 10 that can be applied to any film, but if there's only two of us, we ask 13 questions that can be applied to any film. We then move through three personal questions that we thought of while we were watching this movie before finishing on a question submitted to us by one of our lovely, lovely patrons. The one we start with, Compliment Sandwich, which is if we like this movie. So if we want to give it a score over 5,000 out of 10,000, we give it one thing good, one thing bad, and one thing good. Uh, if we don't like it, we give a shit sandwich. You give it one from bad, one from good, and one from bad. But if we love, 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 love this movie, we give it a hyperbole sandwich, which is one thing good, one thing great, and one thing good, or a combination thereof. Liz? Well. Break my heart like you broke my I... mattress that time. <laughs> oh, please. You wish. <laughs> I have I reoccurring I nightmares about it, Liz. Ah. <laughs> oh. That is so wrong. It is so not anything that's ever happened. Uh, so anyway, I'm in a mood to used. actually talking about the movie. This is this is professional, okay? This is a professional podcast we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Keep it together. All right. You've obviously forgotten how this works. You know, we're professional. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is the movie was well-balanced and well-paced. I felt that it sort of flowed really nicely, kept things moving. Good amount of time spent on different things, you know. It was that I thought it was quite well put together. The next thing I'm going to say is a bad thing. There was a lot of willful theft and or destruction of cultural artifacts, which I just did not find classy. Okay, I just I find that whole era of you know the archaeological stealing from other cultures just kind of horrendous when you go back and watch. All I'll say to that is, just, like, just, it, it is a sign of the times. I don't give a shit if you say it's set in the 30s or it was made in the 80s. It's a sign of both of those times, to be honest. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was still glamorous in the 80s, right? Like, in the oh, 80s, you can see yeah. he's this glamorous guy. But now you're kind of looking back going, uh, why is he stealing that lovely gold statue that's really important to this tribe and just generic South America. We're not actually going to say where it is in South America. Just South America. It's somewhere in a continent. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. To those South Americans, he is the worst fucking thing that's ever fucking happened. He's come mm-hmm. to their fucking land and stolen one of their most precious artifacts. Yeah. Like, so rude. Fuck this So anyway, that's my bad thing. And then my final good thing is... Yay, I thank like God. It, they... <laughs> I know, right? Uh, no, they stayed within their capacity for effects. And so the movie looks good. Which, as you know, was a massive bugbear of mine with like The Mummy and a whole bunch of other movies from that sort of like 80s, 90s. You're kind of like, what are you doing here? This is terrible. Mortal Kombat is a good example of it being terrible. But this movie was good. Like even the bits were a bit woo-woo. They still kept it pretty bog standard. You know, like nothing too crazy. And so, you know, I didn't look at it and go, God, that's terrible. So good work. Good work, filmmakers. So, I will say to uh, that the, yeah. the film, like the the melting face scene, like they the, the filmmakers actually had people approaching them straight after the movie came out. And were like, "How the fuck did you do that?" Because that is amazing. Like again, this movie came out what eighty eighty one. You know what I mean? Like the how you know? Yeah. Um. And uh, we'll be talking about that scene later. But I will say that uh, I said to my boyfriend before the movie started, "Is this the one with the melting faces?" And he went, "Oh nah." And then the faces started melting, and I was like. I hate you so much. And he was just <laughs> laughing his head off. I was like, you found a version shit. of me. <sighs> so rude. Uh, also, I didn't really look at the melting faces because it was heinous. So that actually could have been a bit that looked really bad and I just didn't see it. But I'll take your word for it that looked good. Gross. Um, so I am going to give this movie, what is it going to be out of? Rolling boulders. Yeah, fair. All right. Um, I'm going to give this movie. 7,336 rolling boulders. I'll take that. I will take that. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that, and obviously I'll hyperbole sandwich the shit out of this. I mean, this is like... This oh, is yeah, that's fair. so fucking good. It's so good. 
my my good things, I'm gonna knock them out because you've actually said my great thing. But my my good things, the acting in this is phenomenal. Like Harrison Ford at the top of his grumpy old man, like but still kind of charismatic leading man. Humphrey Bogart channeling motherfucker. He is amazing in this movie, and so is Karen Allen. She's also really good. Shows so is John Rhys Davies. Like there's, Paul Freeman's Bella. There's not a slouch. There's not like some of them are yes, they're over the top and cartoony. But that's what you want for one of these adventure movies. You want that kind of level of over the top and cartoony. The other good thing, yeah, the score. Oh, John Williams, the man. Do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. It's iconic for a fucking reason because it is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the great thing, yeah, <laughs> which you mentioned, is the pacing. Holy shit, there's not a single inch of fat on this film. So much so that Steven Spielberg actually said that he feels like this is his most perfect film because when he came to edit it, there was nothing to take out. Like, there was so little fat in this movie that they actually went back and shot another scene. And usually when you hear reshoots, you think they've shot the movie terribly or the actors have given shit performances. No, they went and shot a scene of them in San Francisco, um, of him catching up with Marion, because they never felt like they gave the movie any closure to those two characters. Even like Paramount, when they first read the script, they were like, this is the most perfect script we've ever read. It's so good. It is so good. Like, you know, we get like this amazing intro into this phenomenal character and like within the first five minutes we know everything we need to know about him and then we get taken on a roller coaster there's a bit of character development there's ah yeah i totally hear you like i i get what you're saying and i i think had i watched it when it came out like if we were watching this when at the movies when it first came out i'd probably be giving it a hyperbole i think it's only because you watch it with the passage of time and that obviously i think because it's such a well-known and iconic movie and there are so many elements that are taken from it for other movies and things, it doesn't feel as fresh to me as I'm sure it did when it was actually new. So that's probably why my score is lower than maybe it would have been, if that makes sense. Yeah, and like I completely understand that. Like for me growing up, like this was one of the first introductions to film that I ever had. And like Harrison Ford basically became a surrogate dad for me in a lot of ways. Cause Aww. he was like, what a man should be. You know what I mean? A little bit stoic stands up for what's right, total badass, you know, like, knowledgeable, but at the same time, like, you know, can pretty handy in a fight. Like, that was what a man was supposed to be. And so, mm-hmm. you know, that was, like, surrogate sure. dad, surrogate babysitter for a lot of a lot of us, a lot of us boys growing up with shitty fucking father role models. That was what the fucking dad, him and Arnie, oh, they were my surrogate dads. Anyway, giving this a score, holy shit, like, again, like, nostalgia all over this. But the fact that, like, it was so good as a child, but yet so good as a teenager, but yet still so good into my 20s and 30s and now 40, that it's still awesome. It's like, how do you, ah, oh, three billion. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't judge, given that I gave about the same score to Promising Young Woman, so. That's exactly I, what I was thinking just of. go with it. But no, I can't, I can't usurp your Promising Young Woman, which interestingly also. <laughs> you can. Fe- I can if I want to, but I'm not going to. Interestingly, <laughs> an actor in Promising Young Woman is in this film. Crap balls. Ah. You see, I knew you wouldn't know who it is. It's Alfred Molina who plays the dodgy dude at the start, who also plays... I know. The lawyer... I don't know. ...in Promising Young... <laughs> who also plays oh, the lawyer yeah, in Promising right. Young Woman that was, like, really remorseful and all that sort of shit. So there you go. Yeah, There's a little okay, bit of I place crossover. it now. But anywho, let's... All right, do you want question two? Yeah, yeah, question two. What have we got, Liz? All right. Question two is, what was the biggest dick move in the movie? There's so many obvious ones, and I expect you to take one of them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the one mm-hmm. where they get to Marion's bar, and the Nazis have clearly hired some local thugs. And and one of the local thugs is, like, beating Indiana to death, and it looks like he's trying to get the upper hand on him. And then the Nazi thug says to one of his troops, he's like, shoot him. He's like, who? He's like, shoot them both. It's like, why the fuck are you going to shoot them both? Speaking of which, why what, the guy that's just been told, shoot them both, why is he not just suddenly immediately joined Indiana Jones' side? Like, he continues to try and kill Indiana, even after hearing this. But I'm like, yeah. what a dick. What a fucking dick. Shoot them both. Fuck you. I, th- I thought that about all of the sort of thugs and, you know, the local locally sourced um, henchmen that the Nazis had or the French guy had. Whatever. They're always, like, supporting these guys who obviously do not give a shit about them or their culture. And it's like, why are you even... Doing like, why are you helping them? They better be paying you a fuck ton of money. A deep philosophical and debate. I, I, how 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 do you go about hiring these people? Right, you've landed in some <laughs> fucking town you've never been to in the middle of fucking nowhere. You followed Indy to find Marion in the middle of nowhere. Immediately land. 
what do you walk up to a fucking like local like hop on hop off bus and go hey do you know where the dodgiest motherfuckers are in town that I can hire to come and kill someone? just take me to the shittiest bar just just find me the shittiest bar where yeah. people punch each other all the time do you That's know some shitty go. people that are have no problem with murdering a dude and destroying a woman's livelihood are you okay with that do you know some guys like that right yep yeah, maybe I was also like yeah there's all these really obvious things okay. mine is Indiana disrespecting the big bad guy with the cool sword by not fighting him, just shooting him. How rude. So they rehearsed fight scene. Harrison Ford (laughs) and everybody in the crew, except for Steven Spielberg, who apparently took tons and tons and tons of SpaghettiOs with him and ate that and didn't eat any of the local delicacy. The rest of the entire crew got sick. Harrison Ford showed up on the day of shooting was shitting his pants, like literally shitting his pants, running back and forth to the toilet, supposed to shoot this fight scene. Harrison said, can I just shoot him? And then he went, yeah, okay, it's probably in line with your character. <laughs> Hence why we never got a badass fight scene between the two of them, because Indy, because Harrison was about to shit his pants. To be honest, I knew that. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to tell the story. Oh, thank and you. Scott thought it would annoy you. Oh, no, <laughs> no, Scott, no, no. Scott really was handy. like, it'll annoy him that you're saying that it, it, it is a jerk. And I was like, but Sam's going to want to tell the story, so I'll let him tell the story. But, yeah, exactly. As soon as it happened, Scott, like, paused the movie. It's like, do you know why he just shot him? You're this fucking why. dating <laughs> me, Liz. You are dating me. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Anyway, yeah, I, I think that was actually a very cool little backstory, but also in the movie it's kind of douchey. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Question three, what kink would this movie totally be into? So the... Easy. Have you gone for the easy answer? Oh, yeah. Whips and chains, for sure. Yeah. BDSM. Yeah. Whips. Had to be done. But no, I. If, if you're choosing your easy answer, then I'm going with snake fetish stuff. <laughs> there totally has to be some sort of creepy <laughs> snake fetish, right? Do not elaborate. <laughs> the bit where the, like, the snake comes out of the guy's mouth and there's like snakes in a plane. All of that. Snakes. Motherfucking snakes. Yeah. Snakes is a good answer. The only other one I can think of was like blindfolding, you know, like how at the end he's like, don't look, Marion. Whatever you do, don't look. Oh, yeah. 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 Why didn't any of the Nazis standing near him not look? Because fuck Nazis. No, they didn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it's just common sense. If like one guy's going, don't look, whatever you do, don't look, I'd be like, I might just not look just in case. I like to just think- <laughs> cover my bases. I'm laughing because I like to think that they are obviously German, so they only predominantly speak German. They might not all be fluent in English enough to, that the ones what? near them are fluent in English enough. Yeah, yeah, for some reason, the Nazis love speaking English in this. They love talking German mm-hmm. to each other. Like when they come across mm-hmm. Harrison, who's like soaking wet and hanging outside a submarine, they love speaking German to him. But when they're talking to each other, oh, English all the way. Yeah, super weird. That actually uh, leads quite well into question four. Uh, what was the biggest load of bullshit in this movie? America, I'm coming for you. Like fucking hell, you're going to get given what is effectively <laughs> the biggest nuclear bomb, <laughs> reloadable nuclear bomb on the face of the fucking planet, and you're just going to go and lock it inside a warehouse. Horse <laughs> shit. What else was in that warehouse? That's what I want to know. God's dick? I don't know. There was like... <laughs> I'm pretty... Sh- I don't think God... Oh, that's quite a conundrum. I don't think... Anyway. He uh, prenated someone, <laughs> so surely he used something to uh, do that. No. Uh, the whole point when she was... A, you got to go read the Bible, man. No, I don't. No, don't Obviously, that's the again. lesson here. No, but okay. I mean, like... <laughs> like <laughs> yes. But, 100%. You're absolutely right. America would you. have immediately dropped that thing in the middle of Germany and sat there giggling gleefully. Mine is, you sort of referenced it just before, I don't think it's likely that Indiana could have survived hanging onto the U-boat when it went underwater. I did not see any gills on his neck. So, a lot of people bring this up. How did Indiana Uh go a couple of hundred kilometers on a U-boat? And I specifically watched it for this. We never saw the U-boat dive. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on the top. I... May have had a, a naval expert watching the movie with me who said it wouldn't have just travelled along on the surface. Why not? Do submarines travel it's faster? Something to do with the, I, yeah, I think it's something to do with like it burns diesel. I don't know. Honestly, I wasn't really listening to him. I just smiled and nodded a lot. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure he said that it wouldn't. 
So, so, so a lot of people brought that up theory. on the internet. I've seen that argument a lot. Is like, okay, did he just hang on underwater and like you know travel, or did he sneak into the very top of the submarine and just hang out there for a day or you know half a day, however long it took to go that distance? Or we never see a dive. Although we we see him soaking wet, obviously outside the submarine, we see him soaking wet, and the naval officer confronts him. And but, he like that. There, but he swam. But he swam. He could have jumped off the submarine. Yeah, he swam to the swam. Deep Yeah. I yeah. honestly, I mean, without if we'd seen it dive, I would have been like, yeah, okay, fuck it. How did he manage to hide inside the chute that leads down to the? I don't know what the fuck you call yeah. it. Yeah. No, I'm with you. <laughs> it's I, the technical I do, term. Technical, very technical yeah. term. Yes. The poop shoot. How did he hang outside I love inside like, a poop shoot? <laughs> I love how you're just like, oh yeah, I I I love the poop deck poop shoot. I use that all the time, but apparently there's not one on like a whole bunch of ships now. It's very disappointing. Oh. But um, I just love that you're like, no, you cannot shit on my movie, and I knew you were going to shit on this piece of it, so I had to go and find out whether that was a thing that you could shit on, and it isn't. No, but the thing is, I, I didn't. I loaded like up and armed deck. myself for this. I was like, fuck yeah, I want to shit all over the fact that we're supposed to believe that he hung on to the top of a sub. And surfed underwater, held his breath for like eight hours at least. You know what I mean? Uh, and then when I watched it, I'm like, wow, we don't really see it happen. So it's, mm. yeah, yep. I was a little bit disappointed. Well, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Anywho, Thank let's you. move us over to the first of our Patreon questions. Comes courtesy of our friend Emily Higgins of the Tasters Podcast. Tastes podcast is an awesome podcast. Uh, she takes two movies, she reviews them, she compares them. Uh, one that's universally beloved, she compares that to a film that isn't, and then usually argues why the universally beloved one is shit, and or or really why you should check out the other film. I know she's done Raiders, and I can't remember what she compared it to. But anyway, Emily's question: What movie would you pair with this film as a double feature? Okay, so I have the perfect answer. I am pairing it with Ghostbusters because it has totally similar vibes at the end with all the spirits and the light shooting up in the sky and shit. There's this whole otherworldly thing and they're trying to save the world from this otherworldly thing and it's in like the 80s. I'm doing it. It's a good answer. That's a good choice. While after watching this last night, I got messaging Topher, formerly of We Watched the Thing fame, and we were talking about underrated Harrison Ford films. The Fugitive. I'm going to go with The Fugitive. I The Fugitive is a really good time. It's a really good time, and like it's like you know it was very iconic in the '90s. Everyone remembers, you know, like I did not kill my wife and him jumping out of the side of the dam. But aside from that, no one really remembers it. I rewatched it like last couple of years. It's actually a lot of fucking fun. Tommy Lee Jones rocks that movie, though. He is awesome. He is awesome, so that's not a surprise at all. Uh, And if you were curious, uh, Tasteless compared this movie to Lara Croft. (laughs) I won't say anything else about that. Uh, But I will ask you question six, which is the one I know you've been dying to get to where you say something really horrible about me. Then I will just let you. So question six, what character best represents the other podcaster? Okay, so... There's You're guy. making me a Nazi, aren't you, Sam? No, no, I, I didn't have the I didn't have the tenacity to go full Nazi, but I will go Nazi sympathizer. <laughs> the, you know, there's a there's a French archaeologist in this who's a pompous arsehole who thinks he knows everything. His name's Belloc. <laughs> <laughs> and he's basically Indy's foil for the entire film. And I wrote this on the premise that you were going to shit on this film. I thought, oh, she's totally going to be a Belloc. I'm going to be the Indy to her Belloc. But you've been so nice. So as a result of you being nice, I'm going to change it to Seller, who's like an awesome dude and helps her out. And I, I, I don't have anything prepared, so I can't say anything more because you fucking ruined my answer. Well, I also speak French. Je parle un petit peu de français. There we go. Sure. Uh, so I'll allow it. I'm oui, not sure that guy spoke French, but there we are. Anyway, um, well, okay, well, that makes me feel bad that you went nice because I'm not going to be. Because I knew you were going to be mean to me. So although there was the main bald Nazi. I, yeah, I, 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 I was about like. Gonna, it, I thought yeah. about it, but he was dressed way too fancy to be you. <laughs> And he knows how to fight. I was like, I don't know how to fucking throw a punch. I get my ass handed to me. It was just, it was the dress. I looked, I thought, Sam's not going to carry around his own coat hanger to like hang his classy jacket on and wear like a fancy tie and shit. You're not, you're not that guy. Oh, the sniveling Nazi. I thought you were talking about the big bulking one that could punch. Oh, okay. 
No, no, the one with the like three piece suit and shit. I forgot yeah. about that one. Clearly, you're not that one. I mean, that guy exactly can can actually like defend himself. No, that's no. not you either. So, I'm going with the dude with the eye patch because he had all these great ideas, but in the end, he just killed his monkey. <laughs> I've been known to kill my monkey a few times, so I'll allow. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But you are going back right. to being Belloc, by the way, you fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Nazi sympathising fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I All can't right. wait to look, uh, open a crate in front of you what? and melt your face. Uh, question number seven. What quote from this film would be the worst thing to hear immediately after you finish having sex? Okay, I've got three. Oh, of course you do. I've got two. Okay, well, I'll go first, and then you go, and then I'll go, and then you go, and then I'll go. How about yes, that? I, I know we've got the same one, by the way. I know we've got the same one. Probably. Yes. Well, we'll see. Okay, so how odd that it should end this way for us after so many stimulating encounters. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> uh, what is this? Where did this animal come from? <laughs> well, mine's kind of linked. I hate snakes, Jock. I hate them. That's, that's good. My final one is, oh, my friends, I'm so pleased you're not dead. <laughs> I like that. That is good. Uh, yeah, quality. What's question number eight? Okay, question number eight is, what side character or characters had their lives absolutely ruined by the events in this movie? I've got an answer, and I don't know how to frame this without sounding like I'm sympathizing for Nazis, because fuck Nazis. I fucking hate <laughs> them as much as anybody else. But Adolf Hitler absolutely had his lives ruined by the event in this movie. He's effectively <laughs> had a, a nuclear weapon level threat taken away from him by the sheer idiocy by his fucking people that he's entrusted to get him this. F- and good, because fuck Hitler. That cunt can fuck off. Fuck him. Anyway, what do you got? You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. <laughs> oh, and speaking True. of monkeys, my answer is the dude with the eye patch because he lost his monkey and now he's all alone. I love that dude. I'm actually glad you picked this. Sad face. That monkey was awesome. He was going to be my character that has gone the longest without showering. That was going to, the monkey. That was going to be my one. I was just, no, he was, because when they were like, he was kissing him or something, and I was like, dude, he's like a monkey. He could be covered in disease. And then I thought, no, he's actually quite well dressed and well groomed. I think he's probably quite clean. I think Indiana <laughs> would be way dirtier than him. Yeah. Yeah. I did go, why the fuck is there a monkey? Because that just seemed weird in the setting, but whatevs, you know. Every 80s movie had a monkey. It was it was very common. I did Google to see if the monkey had a bowler, and in the 30s the monkey would not have had a bowler, but the monkey they used for the movie in Africa could have had a bowler because a bowler came out in the 70s in Africa. So there you go. Anyway, that moves us over to question number nine, which is also a Patreon question. Comes courtesy of our friend Nutrivert. His question, at what point was the perfect time for a bathroom break? And I'm just going to, before you answer, I've, I've ruined this on, I mean, we've, I mean, this has been ruined on multiple occasions. There's no perfect time. None of it is perfect. What, what do you got? Mm. Well, we talked about that because, um, you know, as you said, the pacing and everything is so well done. So I actually chose an action scene. Um, I went for when they're stuck in the tomb fighting off the snakes because he was, they were obviously going to get out because it would have made no sense if they didn't. So you, and you didn't really miss anything of note. Like, you know, they fought snakes. They got out of that brick in the wall or whatever. He destroyed some more priceless artifacts. It was pretty bog standard. Like, it was good, but you could have gone to the toilet and it would have been okay. Yeah, okay, I'll give you the well of souls. Any of the other action scenes, you've got no idea what's going to happen to these characters, right? Like, you know, when like they almost end up being interchangeable in terms of, like, Marion being kidnapped and not sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like the Well of Souls is the one where you're like, okay, it's just the two of them. They're un- under no direct threat from any humans. So they're both going to make it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll give you that. Like I just felt like if they just, there's no way they could have left it there and not have him survive. You know, like yeah, it yeah. just, she might have died, I suppose, but I just didn't really see it. Like I felt like this is going to get sort of pretty quickly, whether it's like a, t- they find a hole and then they shoot out over like a slide of sand or, like the ground's going to shift. or I don't know. One of these stupid <laughs> fake tomb things. Convenience. <laughs> what a great yeah. convenience. Yeah. Um, you always got to have like an escape route somewhere in these tombs. Absolutely. 
Yep. Shame no. about those servants that couldn't find it before they were in there. Why do all of the servants, like all of the dead bodies, always look like they're screaming? Is that just me? Like all of them. They're always like, ah, like their face looks like they're screaming. You'd Every think time. if you're slowly dying, you'd be like, the last thing you'd do is scream. You'd be trying to conserve energy. You'd be like the most bored yeah. face that you can. Well, I suppose it's because you're like, your skin retracts over your face to create your like a, a mouth agape. Yes. And like, I guess it falls down, but it just looks like every single one of them is like lined up a whole bunch of screaming corpses. And I was like, Jesus, that's terrifying. But it did make me laugh. Okay. I will say the biggest load of bullshit was the fact that she started bouncing off corpses into corpses into corpses. Like that almost got a little bit too much. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with this movie, but that almost got a little bit too much. Oh, heavens no. Couldn't say a single bad thing. Walked the line of almost being too much, but not not quite. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so question 10. What character is the most likely to have ended up in hospital for sex-related injuries? 100% seller. Because, like, for, I don't know why. This still, to this day, baffles me. But Marion rocks up to him, gives him two kisses on the cheek, and she's like, oh, that's one to say thank you, that's one for your kids. That's right. And then she just lays one on him and says, that's one for me. And then he walks off... Mm-hmm. The most barred up man that has ever most uh, has ever been barred up in a like you know non porn film. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, he's chuffed as fuck. Yeah. He is fucking chuffed as fuck. Whatever woman he comes across next is going to have her life ruined, and he's probably going to injure himself in the process. No, it's fine because he got it out on kissing that random dude that was there. Oh no 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 no! That is the. Fucking appetite. That is like the entree. <laughs> That's the whore's doom <laughs> to right. whatever he does to the next fucking woman he crumbs across. Holy shit. Well, that's horrifying. What, what about you, Liz? Who you got? Uh, I'm going with the captain of the ship, that uh, dude at the end, because he was clearly skeezy considering the dress that he had for Marion to wear just randomly on that ship. I was like, mm, you're questionable. I, I was actually going to have that dude as the, like, what side character had their lives completely ruined by this movie. But I was like, that guy's life is already ruined. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that dude yeah, up to? He's, a, he's living his best life, man. He's he's a pirate on the high sea. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you can't ruin his life because he's already doing the best version of his ruined life ever. So he's all good. Yeah. As you do. All right. Question 11. Question 11. What was the most moronic decision made by an otherwise smart character? It's got to be the dude picking up the metal object that had been in the fire with his bare hands. That dude, I've come to the conclusion, isn't a very smart man. Oh, okay. Well, if but I he, he, that one, then I'm... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but, he is, but he is also my answer, but he is not a very smart man. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've already seen him in that scene say, hey, shoot both of them. Why? Why the fuck do you need to shoot both of them? Shoot the guy that's the bad guy, moron. And then he does. He just tries to pick up a medallion that's in a fire. Correct. Fucking stupid decision. Yeah, smart. Super smart. Uh, but, okay, to choose a different one to you then, uh, I'm going to say Indiana giving the ark to the American government instead of dump. Like dropping it in the middle of the ocean where no one can ever find it. Yeah, the only logic I have behind that is that he didn't have a choice. Like he rang a well, navy destroyer or something to come pick him up, and they were like, "Hey, what are you doing out here?" Yeah, no, um, actually, he could have. He, he had like a perfectly out. usable U-boat, like that he could have taken because <laughs> they were all dead. Hey, fuck it! If he can swim underwater for fucking hundreds of kilometers, <laughs> he could pilot a U-boat solo. It's not gonna be. Yeah, just just there a U-boat out of the... I'm sure there was some kind of, you know, little tugboat or something. You could have taken it out, stuck... But he had options, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're on some random island in the middle of fucking nowhere. You only have to paddle out like 30, 40 metres and just dump it in the middle of the fucking... That being said, would the crate have, like, rotted over and then the top come off? You know what I mean? Like, if you just dumped it in the water, are you not... Uh, you chain it up, oh. right? You'd find some chains. You chain the fuck out Duct of it. Duct tape it. <laughs> Duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Wrap yeah, your you long like whip around it. Or something first, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my like, we have established that the guy was a moron, but at the same time, mm-hmm. why are you keeping Indy and Marion alive to witness the opening of the Ark? What the fuck are they doing? 
What is Belloc doing? Oh, yeah. What is the Nazi doing? What is the whole the whole group of them doing? Like they like I get Indy popping out with a rocket launcher and saying, Hey, I'm gonna blow that up. Give me back the woman and we'll fucking call it even. I, I get that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of stupid, but at the same time, why they then march them all the way to the opening like mm-hmm. is it some kind of pride thing? Like I don't know. Haha, we're I- gonna tie you to a fucking post and make you watch what you've been searching for. Because that's how fucking, yeah, actually, no, that is kind of in line with the Nazi party. Yeah. Fuck those cows. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I'd already thought they were stupid for not shooting Indy and Marion when they threw them in the tomb. Like, sure, seal them in the tomb forever, but shoot them first because that's just covering your bases. It's some James Bond level shit of like, hey, this is the most convoluted way that we're going to kill you. Which is kind of funny because mm-hmm. I think Steven Spielberg or George Lucas, one of them said to the other, we should make an Indian. No, it wasn't. Spielberg said to George Lucas, I'd love to make a Bond film. And George Lucas said, how about we make our version of a Bond film? And this, this is what came out of it. Well, there you go. Number tw- uh, question 12. What deep philosophical debate arose in you during this movie? Can I? I'm going to go over the very surface level one of I've always had a thing for women with dark hair and like light blue eyes or green eyes, and I always used to wonder where that came from. I always used to wonder what created that, and I think it's this film. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just that you're a man. Yeah, no, no, no obviously, and like man. men have preferences. I like dark hair and bluey green eyes or blue eyes has always been one of my preferences. Has always been like, oh my god, they're so hot. Um, redheads has always been another one. I've never got to the root of the cause no. of redheads, but at the same time, married a redhead. So mm-hmm. I'm really glad that I have brown eyes at this moment. I never oh, have so been before, but I am now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, harking back to the last answer. Actually, speaking of James Bond, when they were on the U-boat and they were heading towards the island, I thought that they were going to be going to like a secret underground island volcano lair, and then I was like. Would the Nazis have been cooler if they had a secret underground island volcano lair? And then I was like, no. They wouldn't have been cooler. They were really terrible people. Nothing can make but the Nazis I took cool. Pause. <laughs> no. But but if anything was going to, it would have been a secret underground island volcano lair. <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, moves over to question number 13. What is something that you notice that you don't think other people might have immediately noticed in this film? Well, clearly everybody's noticed everything in the history of time with this film, so I was never going to come up with anything very creative. Uh, but what I am going to tell you is that the Belloc, your favourite chap, his French accent was not a French accent. It was a really, really shitty accent, and actually all of the accents were really terrible, and they could really have done with... Spending a bit more money on accent coaches, I have to say. Noodle it! Noodle it! Uh, the German accents were so fucking terrible <laughs> that mm-hmm. they later... Oh, no, the French was worse. Yeah, yeah, no, the French is, like, terrible, don't get me wrong. But the German accents mm-hmm. were so terrible and the pronunciation of German words, etc., like that, all that sort of stuff, was, like, so heavily inflicted with American accents that they later re-recorded the German lines for the DVD releases because they figured if they put this out in Germany, Germany would be an uproar and be like, this isn't how we talk. Oh, so it was like um, Inglorious Bastards with um, Brad Pitt and his Italian. Biongiorno. Biongiorno. I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> can, can you say it again? So- Biongiorno. <laughs> yeah, uh, really terrible. Yeah, the French guy's like, wait, isn't this guy meant to be French? This is not a French, it sounds kind of... South African? And that it like me was just some random English guy, but I was like, come on. This that was poor. What's yours? Yeah. Famously no French person. What's your history? Paul Freeman. Mm. <laughs> Not Pierre Freeman. No, Paul Freeman. Um <laughs> <laughs> Impressive that you know that the French word for Paul is Pierre. Actually, I speak I French as well. So was, you suck. I was being a smart oh, ass before. Before, say. Yeah, we oui, come on. Cool. I mean uh, No, I said because. What's why? I forget. Pourquoi? J'oublie tout le monde. Pourquoi? Ah, J'oublie tout le monde. I forget everything, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, what's your answer? <laughs> I love it when someone says they speak French and then they get upstaged by someone who doesn't say anything. Uh, the, my question, uh, my answer to this question is... Je pite en Genève pour un année parce que je travaille pour l'Organisation Mondiale de Trad. Trad? Yeah. I speak French. I just forget everything. 
So shush up your face. I don't even know where to start on that. I'm really good at chess, but I don't know any of the rules. Well, it's because I keep forgetting. I keep thinking of other language words, like because I've studied like Japanese and Arabic and a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of Maori. Like every so often I'll try and think of a French word and then the Japanese word comes in my head and I'm like, no, that is not helpful. Thank you. Stupid brain. I'm not. I'm not fluent in French, but I, I learned it for a couple of years. I'm mostly fluent in like um, English and drunk. I'm really good at drunk. I speak <laughs> fucking fluent drunk. That must be a useful skill. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, enough rambling for me. My answer for this one. Um, it, it's funny because when we were when we were like going back and forth on the questions, I was still watching the movie. And then I included this question and then looked up and I noticed he had some very tasteful nudes in his lounge. Really? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like it was legit serendipitous. It was like as soon as I wrote the question, I was like, okay, get rid of all the trivia that you know about this film. You know, the C-3PO and R2-D2 showing up and, you know, his, his drawings on one of the walls. and all that. Get rid of all that shit. Get rid of all the shit that everybody notices. And so I looked up. And they're literally in Indy's apartment, house, whatever, in this lounge. And there's this nude woman on the painting on the wall behind. I'm like, oh, there's a naked woman. I'm like, fucking there you go. There's your answer. Nice. Happy days. Move on. Yeah, because not everyone else would be such a perv as you. So they wouldn't necessarily have noticed that. I'll tell you what, they're missing out on life. If, if that's how you want to play that, sure. <laughs> yes, that's how I justify my existence. <laughs> anyway, let's move over to my personal questions. Question number one. Would you rather take a propeller to the head like the big German fug who wants to outbox Indy or would you rather have your face completely melted off? Well, the propeller seemed faster and also less soul-crushingly horrifying. So I'm going to go with that. Like, I feel like the propeller, yeah, that's like it doesn't seem great, but the bit where they have their faces melted off, they don't seem to be having a good time for quite a period of time, and it seems to just be like completely destroying them inside and out. Fair enough. Anyway, my second question. Yeah, archaeology. Famously a very fucking boring job involving months of just dusting and throwing away tons of shit and then trying to look for something awesome and spending months and months and months doing fuck all. So, what other boring job could be made cinematically fun and sexy by a peak Harrison Ford? Well, the job that he was kind of paid to do on the regular was actually him being a lecturer, and I thought he was really boring and not sexy at all in those lectures because he made everything sound boring as shit. So that girl with the eyelids? You know, with the... (laughs) I was about to say, some girl has not only painted I love you on her eyelids, but she's had to do it in reverse on her head so that it makes sense from him looking at her yeah. from his perspective. You know what I mean? The first thing I said when I saw him lecturing there, I was like, uh, I don't think there would have been that many women in the lecture theatre in 1936, but clearly that all got special dispensation for her husbands to go or something so that I could just sit and pervert Indiana Jones. Regardless, I didn't find it very sexy. I found him more sexy out in the field. So I'm going to make him a bus driver. He could do some cool driving scenes and like climb out the window and like down the roof and stuff. That's it. That's all I've got. And like a little uniform. um, Tofu, who I mentioned from We Watch a Thing, previously from We Watch a Thing, said Peak Ford could make a fucking insurance claim adjust to sexy. There is no wrong response. I'm with him. I reckon like a tax auditor. I reckon whatever the most boring job is, a school janitor. You know what I mean? He could make anything sexy. Okay, now I'm starting to think I maybe am dating you because literally when I read this question out, Scott went, I don't know, what about like a janitor or an IRS agent? Like literally those are the two examples he chose. And that's what you've just said. That's fucking Fucking creepy. The longer this podcast goes, the more disturbed I'm getting, which is quite Mm -hmm. surprising given how disturbed I already am. This is true. Anyway, that moves me over to my question number three. As I mentioned, the opening scene, classic, amazing, awesome. Like, establishes the character, everything we need to know about him. At the same time, like, sets up the pace for this film. But I want to know from you, Liz, as a non-movie nerd, I want to know, is this the greatest opening scene in movie history? Or what's your top three? Yeah, so... It's iconic. I'll give you that. Like, it absolutely is. That that boulder rolling thing's used in, like, everything, right? Like, I've seen that in all sorts of stuff. Um, 
But I don't know if it's the greatest. Like, that just feels okay. like a massive call. But then I was trying to think of alternatives, and honestly, I don't think anybody's going to like my choices because my choices would be Scream because that whole conversation Drew has – on the phone and stuff, that's pretty classy. Pretty you good. have good, uh, inadvertently uh, stumbled onto greatness. I'm going to say that. No, because, I googled it. No, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, fine. Well, fuck it. I was about to say, you know, like, this is a mainstream A-list Hollywood actor. Everyone's expecting her to survive, and she gets killed in the first fucking two minutes. It's like, what the fuck? Well, but what I googled that. was... Famous actresses that, or famous actors that die at the start of a film, like because that's what I do think is a really iconic starting of a film is when you see this. Because TV shows do it quite a bit, where you think someone's going to be around for ages and then they kill them off real early. Yeah. Um. And then that to me is really iconic, and you don't actually see it in movies as much as I would have thought. But yeah, Scream is is one of them. So that's I googled that, and that's how Scream came up, and I went. Oh, yeah, Scream's pretty good. The other th- ones I thought of was Jurassic Park and Forrest Gump and maybe Reservoir Dogs. Because that really, set- when you were talking about how this one sets it up and tells you everything you need to know, I remember saying that I think on our Reservoir Dogs podcast is that the Reservoir Dogs one sets it up, everything up and you really get the feel for what every character is like from this very basic scene. You're so right. Like, you even see that Mrs. Mr. Orange is a snitch. You know what I mean? Like he, he's like everybody's like, hey, who didn't throw in? He's like, oh, Mister Pink, he doesn't believe in tipping. Like, Orange, we've already seen Orange is a snitch. You're right. Wow, yeah. he's stumbling on greatness again. Yeah. Or sorry, Google's stumbling on greatness again. <laughs> sure is. Oh no, Reservoir Dogs I came up with on my own, but um, because I had a vague recollection of having that sort of conversation. But yeah, yeah, those are sort of the ones that came up to me in my head. But it's really hard to say, actually. The um, the, I mean, the obvious answers is like Dark Knight, where you know we we see a bank break in and we see a series of people getting killed one after the other, and then we realise the Joker is behind it, and we get our, you know, first face up introduction to Heath Ledger's Joker. I mean, it's it's one of the other ones yeah. that's like often brought up. <laughs> to be honest, like th- this is obviously my number one by a mile. Like it's for really good reasons. So I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not going to offer anything more to this. Let's move over to you, Liz. Let, let's see what you've got. So, question 17. Why the whip? So, from a movie law perspective, in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he gets dropped into a lion tamer's area and he uses the whip to tame a lion. So, for nostalgic reasons, that's why he uses the whip. From, like, a practical kind of aspect, I mean, he can leap over gaps he can use it to disarm people no one really expects anyone to pull out a whip you know like you know most people expect to pull out a gun or a knife like it's kind of different it's unique he can use it to ascend he can use it to grab items and pull them to him it's kind of unique it's kind of different it's kind of awesome yeah it was just such a when i actually was watching i knew he had a whip obviously but when i actually was watching it, i was like hey, that's a bit random why a whip so that's I thought I'd throw it over to you because I figured you'd either have the actual reason or just the practical reason, and you went with both. So that's awesome. <laughs> Could you imagine being another lecturer and you go around to see your lecturer mate and you're like, "Okay, I need you to go get this," and your lecturer mate's like, "Sweet, let me pack a whip and a gun." You'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You'd be like, "Okay, uh, uh, clearly you're planning <laughs> to have a grand old time." Yeah, it's it's a random one. But so is there an Indiana Jones video game? Because as you were describing it, it really sounds like actions you could take in a video game. Man, don't ask. don't ask me questions this time of night, Liz. I'm fucking too far gone. Oh, well, that's going to be great for the next question because I hope you're just going to do this off your head. <laughs> off, the to- off, off your head. <laughs> off the top of your head. Uh, the question was, how many adventure movie tropes can you name off the top of your head that are found in this movie? Because, my God, there were a lot. There were tons to the point that I was like, even when I answered this earlier today, when I was in the clear state of mind, I just wrote thousands. <laughs> I haven't elaborated. No, on this. I need your name at least three. Name at least three. Well, the, okay, the rolling boulder has been parried uh, like a million mm-hmm. times, right? Also, the Jokey like guy. the guy doing like the sword act and then Indy just shooting him has also been parried. Or mm-hmm. well, you know, homage, whatever you want to fucking call it, is like tons of times. Yeah, yeah, well, just everything you know, like the the darts coming out of the walls, or the the native tribe chasing him, or like the um, local guy being his sidekick and like taking the yep. special trope. Oh, just everything, right? Like the the, the thing everything. for me, and 
the thing for me is like as a massive movie nerd i hate to say this is something like you know th- this is the first time they did it because there is somebody out there in the universe who's going to be like no we're actually in the 1940s film treasure of sierra madri they actually <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah, no, was... I totally, I totally get what you're saying. But actually, that's what I was kind of getting at with this question. Well, what I was thinking about is, I bet this was the inspiration for so many of these tropes, even if they've been done before. The reason they're tropes probably is due to Indiana Jones, and um, that's why a lot of it felt really familiar to me. I think because it's just been all done over and over. Yeah, so, so so to elaborate on that, there's a, a 50s film starring Charlton Heston, I can't remember the name of it, but like his look is exactly the same as Indiana Jones's look in these movies. Uh. And George Lucas, when he was making these films with Steven Spielberg, they said, you know, we want to, you know, basically capitalise on the serials that used to come out, the TV serials that were like these action sort of romps. We want to take that, we want to make a B movie, we want to make it like A grade level sort of thing so a lot of the a lot of the stuff that is in these films has been replicated before which is why i'm like yeah i don't want to say hey that was fucking the first time they ever did that sort of thing Mm. like even some of the scenes like indy coming over the crest of a hill and like you know start the plane start the plane and then suddenly fucking a hundred dudes are behind him all like you know armed up ready to go i'm like i'm sure that's been done a million times but yet when you watch this you're like this is 1980 like how many times have they done big you know like grand ensembles where they have hundreds of people behind or extras, you know, 100 yeah. extras behind a guy, you know, surely they've done it, but it's, yeah. No, 100%. And that's exactly what I meant really, really on in this podcast when I was just like, had I seen this initially, I'm sure I would have given it a really high score because it would have felt really fresh. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, my last question uh, is is one that really occurred to me as I was watching it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to your answer because I think you have a good one for me. You indicate, you know, in, implied it at the start why doesn't marion get more appreciation and lists of badass action movie chicks she seems pretty cool and she's hot man fuck you liz i told you at the start of this podcast before we started recording i had a real problem answering one of these questions this was that question i've got no fucking idea I legitimately have no fucking idea why yeah. Marion doesn't get more recognition. The only thing I could think of is like when you immediately think of like badass action movie, adventure movie, whatever, like woman. Sarah Connor. Yeah, exactly. Sarah Connor had a couple of films, is a protagonist. Uh, Alan Ripley, mm. sure, Aliens, is a protagonist, is like the main focus of a couple of different films. So you know them. You, you start throwing Angelina Jolie yeah, out I there. Guess so. She was the protagonist in a lot of like Salt and Tomb Raider and all that sort of shit. Like for this film, Marion is a side character. It doesn't get introduced until what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes into the film. And it goes on to be an absolute badass. And it's kind of yeah. sad. That I, I I hate to say this to you because you're not you haven't seen the other indie films, but yet the next indie movie it's like it it goes okay here's this amazing woman who's an absolute badass who can hold her own who yes yells at indie a couple of times during some of the action scenes when she needs help but at the same time she's self sufficient she can you know like think her own two feet she all this sort of shit the next film they take a massive step back there's a character called ah. Willie who is terrible she is the screaming damsel in distress the entire movie and it's it's, it's depressing to be honest it's like Ugh. talking about stumbling onto greatness yeah, they stumbled onto greatness and were marrying in this film and then just ruined it yeah I, I thought it was great because you know it really made me think i was thinking of um under siege you know how we were talking about how ridiculous they wrote that character particularly for the first what nine tenths of the film or something yeah. she was so shit and had no ability to fight it by herself or anything and marion was the opposite marion really got in there and was like fighting people and doing things and being a badass and i just think she does have small credit she's pretty cool literally the first scene that we see of her she's out drinking someone yeah drinking out like, drinking some rando dude yeah <laughs> Fucking amazing. And then after that, like, she's in a turret shooting down all these people. You know, she's, like, you know, hiding inside crates. She's amazing. She's Mm. fucking awesome. I I don't know. To be honest, I've got no idea. Speaking of that out drinking scene, one thing I wanted to mention I haven't yet is I want to give a shout out to all the callbacks in the film. Like, they did so many good callbacks of, like, so she's out drinking that guy and then she's going to try and out drink the French guy. Um you know, in in the tent, and there's um, 
Oh, I can't think of any of the other, but there's like three or four callbacks in the film where they set it up earlier or gave you sort of a clue about it earlier and then they deliver on it later. And I think, God, that's really clever that they did that. Just even like the guy, how he burns the medallion into his hand and then that's what they use to get into the Well of Souls or whatever. I'm just like, that's actually really smart. That's, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, thank I you. thought that was really quality and that needed a good shout out. I'm saying thank you like I fucking own like any percentage <laughs> yeah, of this. Like, thank you. Thank you for thank appreciating you. the I know, I wrote film. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm real glad you noticed all the shit that I put in there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for appreciating a film I like, Liz. It really means a lot. So you, you got no idea how much this means to me. <laughs> it's just been an emotional time. <laughs> <laughs> it has. It fucking has. Oh, dear. Anyway, that moves us down to our final question, which, of course, is a Patreon question. And this one comes courtesy of our friend Chris Yeeney. You're the fucking man, Chris. His question, Mm -hmm. which on-the-nose song would you drop into this movie and where? (laughs) Okay, so I was struggling to think of something. (laughs) So I asked ChatGPT. And a really good suggestion... Okay, <laughs> a really good suggestion. It said that a popular choice for an on the nose song to insert into Raiders of the Lost Ark would be the Raiders March by John Williams. <laughs> yes, the actual theme song for the movie. <laughs> I laughed until I cried. I was like, what's the no actual shit? fuck? GPT. <laughs> That would actually be a really on the nose song to put into this movie. <laughs> More like shit, GBT, am I right? <laughs> oh, it just really creeped me up. Shit, I was the like, fucking bed. Not expecting that. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, okay, but then what other song would you suggest that isn't actually in the movie, bruh? And then it came out with credits clever to revival, and I was like, no. So in the end, I'm going to go with, if you won't take the answer of the theme song for the movie. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's on the nose enough, you know what I mean? Like, it's obviously, like, kind of designed for the film, but I don't think it's on the... I'm going to guess it works. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a very, very, very iconic theme song, and it's fucking amazing, but it's also a terrible answer. So, chat GPT, you suck. Um, yeah, so instead I'm going to go with Walk Like an Egyptian when he's fighting all the randos oh, in the market. <laughs> it's terrible as well. It's, it's so terrible <laughs> to the point that I'm like, song. I don't, I'm, I'm annoyed that I didn't think of it first. Well, you said yours was shit, so what's yours? Oh, mine's fucking terrible. Mine's fucking de- the other oh, day at work. Walk Like an Egyptian isn't terrible. Oh, you know, no, it is. It's, 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 they're all fucking terrible. That's the idea of answering this question, I suppose. All I've got in my head is, all right, partner, keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. Rolling, rolling, keep rolling, 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 rolling. So when the boulder starts fucking rolling, you drop the <laughs> biscuit. Oh my god, biscuit. that's amazing! <laughs> you drop the biscuit into that. Keep rolling, 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 roll. rolling, what? rolling. What? Keep rolling. rolling, rolling. <laughs> That's a spectacular answer. I can't believe you think that's a better. That's amazing. That's fucking and terrible. I love Limp Biscuit. Well, some of Limp Biscuit. Is it but a guilty pleasure? We like, Is Limp Biscuit a guilty pleasure? We Come were early two thousands kids. Like, yeah, that's that's our jam, man. When you. When you come to see our new podcast, uh, is this a guilty pleasure? We are going to debate Limp Biscuit being a guilty pleasure or not. It's a sign of the times, it's, for sure. Yeah. But, Anyway, it's a very niche sort of. I think it's only you know it'll only be a very small group of people of that sort of demographic, those years, around yep. our year of birth, which is old, many years ago. New metal dated itself. You're right. New metal dated itself very mm. fucking quickly. Whereas like this mm-hmm. is the coolest fucking music. Why does no one listen to it now? Why do people still listen to Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles and <laughs> all then these why other do bands? You still, why do you still dress like Fred Durst? I can't fucking help how I look. <laughs> you want me to fucking edit my face? <laughs> I can't help that I look like the cunt. <laughs> it's the backwards head I was thinking of. I, have I got a hat on? Fuck you. <laughs> sorry. Couldn't help myself. It must be the beer and a half that I've drunk. Anywho, that does take us down to the end. Thank you, Liz, for joining me on my triumphant return. Thank you so much. Hey, we've got some cool things coming up. You've got some cool things coming up. What are they? 
Well, I am really trying to line up a fairly spectacular episode with a couple girls you guys might know as Emily and Ashley to do Barbie. I'm still trying to line it up with them, but I'm feeling positive about it. Because Barbie with Emily and Ashley, oh my God, it's going to be like the best. I'd love to do Barbie. I know, but it feels like a girl's thing. You miss I'm that. being sexist. Double entendre, yeah. Oh, I see you like to do, but okay, yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Wrapped in plastic is fantastic. Okay, now you're just quoting the song, (laughs) which I loved when I was 14, by the way. Yeah, amazing. Anywho, uh, thank you everybody for returning. I mean, we I've seen the download numbers. We've managed to retain our usual our usual stuff, so that's been fucking awesome. Thank you everyone for coming back and listening to this episode, though it means the world to us. And thank you so much to our patrons for like sticking with us over this time, which you guys know all about. Uh, thank you to Liz again for joining me. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, you can find us on Twitter. Well, not really, because Twitter's gone to shit. But you can find us on Twitter at Movie Reviews and alternatively, we are on Instagram and Facebook at Movie Reviews and Twenty Qs. Or you can send us an email at mritqs at gmail dot com. Anywho, that is thanks from me. Uh, thank you from me. Au revoir. <laughs> A bientôt. <laughs> That's French for goodbye. Ugh, I didn't watch either of those things. I couldn't. Ah, the cockroach is getting really close. <laughs> Stop moving. Oh, it's so gross. There's a fully grown woman <laughs> being scared of a two-inch cockroach. <laughs> Never thought I'd you'd be scared, scared of your two-inch cockroach. Yeah, there we then. go. Never thought you'd be scared of a two-inch cockroach. But here we are. <laughs>